leading up to this one, you had referenced a couple of times, first time George started against this team, you stated you were unhappy with yourself and your plan for Jordan in the face of all the pressure that he got. Was there a specific idea of giving him more control at the line of scrimmage last night? Because it seemed like he had a lot of can plays where he was surveying the field, using his cadence to give him the declare, and then taking advantage of it. Yeah, I think, um, I think we've done a better job as a staff and certainly have put some time into knowing that we are going to get some, some pressure teams going into the season. So we invested some time in the off season and, and trying to find a better plan. Um, I think anytime you're playing the teams like Kansas City, certainly Minnesota, we got another one coming up here with the, with the Giants that will, whether it's zero blitz or some exotic pressures where they're bringing corners and um, you can get a lot of different looks. You, you have to have a, a good plan for that. Uh, especially uh, when you're when you're doing a lot of movement, like having different motions and whatnot, it's different than if you're just sitting there static two by two or three by one, where you could have the same answers all the time. Well, that's really not how we've been built. So, um, just having some plays, whether it's cannon to different protections or different looks, whatever it may be, and then he's done it. He's just He's got more experience going against it, and so even when um, there was there was a play um, in the game where they brought all out on us, and we didn't even have a can on the, for, for the protection, um, and he got us into a max pro. So I just think that shows just how he's matured as a quarterback and the growth that he's shown. This growth that he's had, particularly starting like with Pittsburgh. We just see him set. He's just got that extra second. And I, I watched him last night. I thought, this has got to be because he's more confident where the pressure is going to come from. I mean, has he, is, the, is picking up where the blitz is coming from been on the rise with him and with the offensive line? Yeah, I think everybody. I think uh, the guys around him are playing better, but I think he's got a, he's just more comfortable. He's gotten more time on task, more live reps. Um, and so I think his confidence has certainly grown. Now, what does what does playing with the lead allow Joe to do on the def on the defensive side? Well, typically I would say, and it's it's not always the case, but usually you're going to have to defend more passes than runs. Um, I do think Kansas City did a good job of staying with the run game, and certainly it was very effective for them. We had some situations. What's there, there's going to be situations, especially when you go against a, an offense like that, going against Patrick Mahomes, where you're going to play some shell. And it's going to leave you a little bit light in the box. Um, what's disappointing is when you call single safety defenses and you give up an explosive run. And that happened a few times where we don't have guys in the right gaps. And that is, that's what you got to fix. You can't allow that to happen. I get it sometimes. It, it can happen if... Like I said, if you're in a light box and you're playing too high to try to limit the explosive pass plays that they're capable of, of generating. Um, but when you're in sh single safety defense, you, you can't allow that to happen. You've had injuries on that side of the ball defense, you've had a trade. What do you think the job Joe's done with that defense this year? Yeah, I think it's it's it seems to be getting better and better each and every week. And certainly every week we have new challenges and every team's going to present a, a different problem for you. Um, I think, you know, just reflective of this last game, one of the things that we knew going into the game was Patrick does such a great job of creating off schedule plays. And so it was important to us to be very disciplined with our rush lanes. And unfortunately, there were a few instances where we were not. And he got out of the pocket and was able to scramble and make some, some off schedule plays. So, um, it's never going to be perfect. What I thought we did a really good job was, especially in that first half, was when they got down in the red zone, we, we kept them out of the end zone, and that proved to be um, you know, big in the game. And then, obviously, after giving up the touchdown, coming back and stopping a two-point play, that was, that was a critical play in the game as well. But, yeah, I, I think our guys are, you know, we've overcome – overcame some adversity, had, had to play a lot of different guys, but it's also a credit to the men that are ready to, to play, to step up and go in there. And I think, you know, guys like Corey Valentine's come in and he's 
he's played really well. I thought he, he played really well last night, um, very physical, and, you know, we need that from the back end. He's gotten stops pretty regularly over these last few games. What's been kind of the key to that? Um, well, everybody doing their job. Um, and just, I think a lot of goes into the plan. Just if you have a big, get a beat on what people are going to try to do to you. And if you can take away what they want to do and, you know, make them go off schedule, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, that's been a big part of why we've had success. Does Christian's hamstring look like it's anywhere near as severe as the one? We don't know yet. We do not know yet. Um, we're waiting till tomorrow and should have a better indication of where he's at. Um, you, back to the run defense that you're talking about, about how you get that part cleaned up as far as like the number of yards that Pacheco gained when he just was just moving piles. I mean, so it seemed like the run defense actually was fine for the most part, but it was just all those. There, there, was, a couple, there was a couple runs where we got gashed pretty good. Um, yeah, that that's always, and I, you know, conversely, I thought AJ did a really good job of keeping his feet moving, and especially early on in the game, and fighting and getting where he got. Uh, there was one in particular where we got a seven-yard gain where it's blocked for like four, and those those three yards may not seem like a lot, but it just it sets you up for different situations where you know second and shorts a lot more advantageous for, for an offense than second and medium. So, um, yeah, that's something that we talked about today in terms of just we knew going into the game, that guy runs with relentless effort. I got a lot of respect for how he plays the game. And, you know, was he a seventh-round draft pick? Um, he is a, he's a violent runner, and he brings a lot of energy, a lot of juice to that football team. And I think he does a great job. Um, but we knew that. He was one of those guys that's gonna, he's gonna play till the echo of the whistle. So you can't for one second relax and think he's, somebody else is gonna get him down. You need to, you need to gang tackle that guy. Matt, is it just a coincidence that AJ seems to get more effective when the calendar turns to December? Is there maybe something more to that with how he plays? Yeah, I think there could be something more to that. But yeah, you're you're dead on when you say that. I think we all can see it and. The results kind of speak for themselves over the last couple of years. He's he's been pretty effective um, later in the season. Is the um, continuation of the season going to get tougher for Jordan? Because you know a guy with ten interceptions, you probably weren't opposing defenses probably weren't that it you know worried about him, and now all of a sudden he's piling up these huge numbers. You think? Teams are going to really spend a lot more time breaking him down now. No, I mean I think you. At least I can only speak for us how we prepare. I, I think you prepare the same for each opponent that you're going up, going into each and every game. I don't think somebody's going to take him lightly. Um, this is the NFL, uh, and so you better prepare like you're playing the best quarterback in the league each and every week. Otherwise, I mean, you're going to get, you get the potential to get embarrassed out there. Matt, what do you think with Ben Sims, the job he's done to kind of get himself in a position to, to you know, play some big snaps down here in the stretch after being kind of a late arrival at the, at the end of camp? Yeah, I think he's, first of all, his approach has been spot on uh, since day one, since we got, got him in here. He was the guy that we actually brought in um, on the visits. Um, was it the 30 visits or whatever? And so we kind of got to know him a little bit and really liked the person and just the character makeup. Um, and I think he's just, he's approached it the right way from day one. He's got a guy that he cares about what he's doing and he comes in with a great attitude and just goes to work. And I think John Dunn's done a really nice job with that room. He's certainly tasked with uh, um, a unique situation, I would say, to, just to have that much youth in that room. but. You know, it's been a lot of fun to watch the growth of all those young guys. And um, they, they come with great energy every day. And just like I said, they, they're all ready to get to work. Matt, a couple weeks ago you mentioned that every week you get together with your staff and talk about the path to victory or how you need to approach it to come out with a win. Was featuring AJ and those extra three yards, the stuff, the hard stuff that's going to keep you ahead of the sticks and control the football, maybe keep it away from the homes, 
Was that part of the plan? Because it seemed like those first two drives were completely epic, and a big part of it was the work AJ was doing. Yeah, uh, you you would like to be as as balanced as possible, and I know early on we we definitely leaned on the run, but it was being it was efficient and that allows you to call more runs when you are efficient, when you're staying ahead of the sticks, when you're staying out of third down. I think that's where a lot of times your run pass ratio gets lopsided is it just typically when you're in, you know, whether it's third and medium, third and long, you're going to throw the football. And so if you can stay out of those situations, if you can stay out of your get back on track situations um, and be a normal ball, you got, you got more opportunities to, hand it off and certainly when he's getting you know those extra yards it allows you to do that and I thought we were doing a pretty good job up front um, at least sustaining the line of scrimmage to get him to the line of scrimmage and um, yeah I just can't say enough about just what he provided for our team last night. Matt what you what you think of that last field goal by Anders and just uh, where he's at right now after you know kind of some some up and down weeks. Yeah, that was big time. I mean, you talk about the most critical moment. Um, it was kind of one of those situations where, well, what do we have? Third and six on the 20 yard line. And we had talked about it. Obviously, I, I think Spags does an unbelievable job at, with, with the Chiefs. And quite frankly, I probably thought he was going to all out pressure us. And so we, unlike what happened a few weeks ago, when we kind of took the ball out of Jordan's hands. Um, I didn't want to do that, but at the same time, did not want to throw an incomplete pass. And so we talked about it. Hey, if it's not there, you know, potentially take a sack. Now, I don't want to go lose that many yards <laughs> and make that field goal a little bit more difficult, but it's a credit to honors and just the whole operation to, to go in there and, go, and execute in a critical moment. The late in the second half, it's 21-19, and then you get a holding penalty from left tackle, and now you're like second and 17 on your 16, and Jordan finds Romeo for about 27 yards. What's that play like? I mean, you talk about your get-backs, but I mean, you get out of the hole there and then go back in and try to get another field goal up in distance. Yeah, um, that was actually uh, something that we saw in-game made an in-game adjustment and talked about it on the sideline. Um, I know you guys are all into those in-game adjustments. So. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was just something we saw and we made it and those guys went out there and executed it. And, um, you know, it was, it was pretty good protection. I think there was a little push on the left side and Jordan made a great throw. Rome was in the right place in the right time. And yeah, he, yeah, it's just, I don't want to get into too many of the details of it, but I'll tell you what I loved about it is in Rome's, he's got the right mindset when the ball's in the air and you guys have all seen it. He is, I mean, that he's got the, the, the mentality that that ball is mine and he went up and snatched it with aggressive hands. Um, and that was, that was obviously a big time play because it allowed us to sustain a long drive. And I think we did a pretty good job, although you'd like to finish the game off with a touchdown and, to kind of put the game away. Um, I want to say we had like 11 minutes or whatever time of possession in the fourth quarter, something like that. On that same drive, Matt, I think it was the same drive. Malik dropped one and then he came back a few plays later. Yeah, was maybe, yeah that, that juke move, how, how important was that for him? And what did that show you about him to come back from that drop? Ironically, that's something that we talk about in the team uh, meeting room today. Uh, just showing that, that play, um, because that really wasn't the first play wasn't designed to go to him necessarily, uh, but Jordan did a good job. The pocket allowed him to progress to a second option, and I know that was there was a defender right there, so it's not the easiest of plays. But it's a play that I'm, we've seen him make tougher catches, and but I think it's such a great lesson. Just because something happened, be it good or bad, doesn't mean it's going to impact the next play. And that's what I'm talking about always when you talk about that next play mentality. So it was really cool to see somebody respond from some negative adversity and make a critical play in that game. Um, I know it's just a simple like six-yard route, 
but to take that and make somebody miss and turn it up the sideline, I don't know, what do you get, like 15 yards or whatever, I believe. Um, that was that was a pretty cool moment. And he always demonstrates some pretty good emotion and uh, after he catches the football. So do you guys holler out, hey, next play, just move on? I mean, is that a thing that you guys say, next play? Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's being said in the huddle, quite frankly. Um, you know, I'm I'm sh I'm sure that some of the guys, you know, they, that's part of football. You got to be able to pick each other up, and but uh, that is, I, I think that's a that's one of those characteristics that you have to have if you want to be a, a successful player in this league, because it's not always going to go your way. Um, we always talk about it like they get paid too, so people are going to make plays on you. You're going to have a bad play. We're all human, we're not perfect, uh, but how do you respond to it? And so I was really proud of him in that moment. Some of those throws that Love has made the last two, maybe three weeks, I mean, like the touchdown to Watson in the back of the end zone where he's got a guy in his face, the one to Romeo Dobbs down the field, kind of post, post-ish route, sidearm one to Jaden Reed that it's almost complete. I mean, do you see those in practice regularly or is this stuff that's manifesting itself as you get into the game? Uh, I'd say that's something that we've seen kind of over the last couple of years in practice. And it's just, I think it's happening at, on a more consistent level where he's making the, making the throws. Because sometimes when you do that, you don't always throw the best ball. But, um, you know, it's a credit to him. I think he's just... He's put a lot of time and effort into this thing, and it's also a credit to the guys around him that he trusts them to go make the play for him. Because, I mean, that touchdown pass to Christian, yeah, he put it in the perfect spot, but Christian also made up a, a hell of a play just going up and getting that and, again, demonstrating aggressive hands and just the concentration that it takes to make that play. So it's a credit to all the guys. Uh, certainly that fourth down to Rome, I think, is that the one you're talking about? I mean, got a little loose in protection there. He had Chris Jones right in his face. So, because if you want to be honest about it, it probably should have gone down to Wicks. But I think it was one of those deals where he didn't have a whole lot of time to, he just reacted and was trying to give us an opportunity. And it felt like that ball hung up there forever. But the concentration that it took for Rome when I want to say it was Reed that was closing in on him and got a pretty good hit on him. Uh, for him to make that play, that was, that was, you could argue, the most pivotal play for the offense in that game. That it could have been for a completion. Too. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was an incredible throw under duress, and Rome made a play. You might want to punt on this question, I understand, but with so much at stake in all these games, um, you know, the Owens penalty, that was up, you were, I've never seen you quite so mad. I'm sure the Chiefs are pissed off. They, you know, sure, there's, yeah. there's two there's two plays where they probably should have ran clock right on the fumble. They probably should have had, should have been a runoff there. Looked like Velvet Scantling was pushed backward. With so much at stake in all these games, is there, does the league need to come up with some sort of solution to fix what seems like easily fixable calls? That's a great question for for whoever's in charge, for uh, Commissioner Goodell, I guess. But it's your team that's at stake. I mean, you're fighting for a playoff yeah. spot and you easily, easily could have lost the game because of a stupid mistake, right? Yeah, that's every week, right? I mean, like, seriously, they're, they're, some of these calls are, they're tough and I get it. The game is played at an incredible rate. I mean, the speed of the game is it's pretty fast when you're down there and um, they're, they're not easy calls and they got a tough job and um, but yeah, you, you, the whole thing to me is just the consistency at which you call it. If you call it one way, call it that way the whole game and call it both for both teams. That's when you get frustrated, I think, is when you see inconsistencies, um, especially in game, because there's going to be differences within crews. I mean, we all see things a little bit differently, and that's fine, it's, and you kind of know uh, going into games, you always give your team the report on what this crew typically calls. And, you know, if, if you feel it early in game, if they're going to call it tight, then you better, you better adapt and change the way you play. Or if they're letting you play, then 
sometimes you can play a little bit more aggressive depending upon the position. But um, yeah, I think when there's clear and obvious situations, i.e., not talking about this specific play, but <laughs> i.e., a hit when it's in bounds, yeah, you'd like to think that there could be something done to remedy that. But that's obviously above my pay grade. So is yeah, that eligible for New York to change? Is that a play that is eligible for us? That's a great question. I don't, I don't, I don't have that answer. I don't believe so, though. In terms of how you teach it, because this one hurt you guys, but you got a quarterback too. The next one might help you guys. If if they're in the field of play, doesn't matter who it is. If they're in the field of play, you got to hit that guy. Bottom line. So. I think J.O. did his job, you know. I, it was clear to me that somebody was in the field of play, and, you know, you, so we're going we're gonna to keep coaching it that way because I've also seen it in, shoot, I think Jordan had one earlier this year when we were playing New Orleans where it appeared like he was going to go to bounds, and he scooted up the sideline for an extra 20 yards or whatever it was. So. I get it. It's a tough situation. It's a tough position to be in at times, but you got to ensure that they go out of bounds. And if you know if it's pushing them out of bounds, it's pushing them out of bounds. I don't really care. But if you're in the field of play, I mean, you're fair game. Matt, how long has mannerism take been a thing? That's the first I've ever heard of that. Last really? night, Nick Nixon was talking about how he was studying mannerism tape, and he saw Patrick. Touch his knee. I mean, for tennis, I don't know if that was really one of his mannerisms, but uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but no, that those that's something that it's been going on for a long time. I think in terms of you always study, just like we have to study ourselves on, on terms of whether it's signals offensively, defensively. Um, you know, everybody listens to the TV copies because you can hear they they mic up either your center or guards. Um, and so you, you just want to know what the opposition is hearing so that you can have something off of that potentially or a code word or whatever it may be because everybody's trying to, I don't want to call it stealing signals. I know that's a hot topic nowadays. <laughs> um, this is legal though. So. I, I, Last one, guys. I, I can't believe you punted on the Jamora invitation, but you talked officiating for five minutes. Um, you talked about what you talked about with the team, with Malik. What was your messaging about staying the course and not getting over your skis? Because somebody asked you last night, you know, how does a young team respond to the success? And you said, we're going to find out. So how did you go about kind of inoculating them to make sure that they're in the right headspace and thinking about something other than the playoff picture? Well, I think, you know, just going back and thinking about where we were and it's always about us in that room and it doesn't matter what that's why I don't I don't I don't try not to read too much uh, if anything it's just whatever Waller sends me um, but it, it's just because you don't want it to affect how you do your job um, you know you gotta you gotta keep it about the team and understand that there's going to be challenges. Every week is a new challenge, and um, you know you got to you got to stay focused on what what's right in front of you. And you know as soon as you start feeling yourself and you feel like you've arrived, this league has a way of knocking you off. And bottom line is, we're a fi we're a 500 football team. We're six and six right now, and we clawed out of a, a tough spot. But um, you know. Every week, you got to bring your A game. And so the reason we were able to kind of overcome some of that adversity is because of the effort and the work that we put in to get to where we are now. And it's not, it's, so we know the formula. And you got to stay the course. And it, it, it all comes down to the work you're putting in, being intentional about what you're doing, and just being disciplined throughout the process. And I, I do think that this group, um, I think that we've kind of learned the hard way of what it takes. Um, and there's still many challenges right in front of us. So we got to have a, another, we just got to get back to work and have another great week of, of prep because it's a new challenge on Monday night in New York.